On February 20th, 2003, the Station Nightclub fire killed 100 people and injured another 230 victims. Great White was playing to an audience of roughly 450 people when shortly into their opening song disaster struck, changing the lives of many forever. This Rhode Island fire would become the fourth most deadly nightclub fire in the United States to this date. Investigations following the Station Nightclub fire would find several issues that contributed to the rapid spread of fire, ultimately resulting in the deaths of many. Changes to fire codes countrywide would result from the Station Nightclub fire. The station had very limited equipment installed and located on site to aid in the suppression of fire. In violation of fire code, there was no fire suppression system. No fire department connection existed on site due to no fire suppression systems being installed. There was one smoke detector located above the stage with three strobing fire alarms. One fire extinguisher was located by the bar. The building had four fire doors accessible by occupants. No manually activated pull action fire alarm was installed in the building. On this plot of the building layout, you can see where the fire exits, smoke detector, and fire alarms were located. During the night of the 20th, the station was operating while violating several existing fire codes. Investigations following the fire found confusion between fire officials and the club's management regarding whether the station nightclub required a fire sprinkler system. Due to the building being built in 1946 and the size of the building, many believed that the nightclub was exempt from having a fire suppression system. The building had an occupancy change from a restaurant to a nightclub. On the night of the fire, the nightclub was legally required to have a fire sprinkler system. However, none was present. Due to the rapid growth of the fire, the only way to contain the fire would have been in the early stages with the use of a sprinkler system and portable fire extinguishers. The fire department responded within five and a half minutes from the initial ignition. However, the nightclub had reached flashover at roughly the same time. No efforts by the fire department could have reduced the toll of the devastation on occupants and the building itself. Had a sprinkler system been installed, it certainly would have provided significant time for the crowd to exit the building and, according to NIST experiments, would have maintained a tenable environment in the club. The NIST experiments use quick response sprinkler heads. Three of them had activated less than 40 seconds after initial ignition. The Fire Sprinkler Incentive Act of 2003 was a response following the destruction seen in the station fire where the bill would give tax cuts to commercial and residential properties. The National Fire Protection Association studies found that the death rate in residential homes with sprinkler systems reduced death by up to 81%. The use of untreated polyurethane foam was and continues to be a violation of NFPA and International Code Council model codes, as well as the regulations in use in Rhode Island at the time of the fire. The use of pyrotechnics during the band set was not permitted by the fire marshal or fire department and violated state fire codes. Without these violations, the fire would have never occurred that night. The fact that these codes were violated for more than two years indicates an overall lack of enforcement, which isn't unique to the one jurisdiction, it's an issue in many communities around the United States. While model codes required the use of fire retardant on polyurethane foam at the time of the fire, Without strong enforcement and council support, the fire inspector becomes a hollow voice with no presence in the community. The station nightclub was built in 1946 and had an unusual floor plan. The nightclub had four fire exits available for patrons to escape. Studies done on public response to fire shows that occupants in an unfamiliar location will exit through the same doors they entered. While the main entrance to the station consisted of two double doors, the hallway leads to a single three-foot wide door. As seen in the video and in post-fire investigations, two-thirds of the occupants tried to escape through the main entrance. The entrance was quickly overwhelmed by the volume of people leading to occupants becoming trapped and trampled. The majority of the fatalities that occurred in the fire were near the main entrances. The four viable exits altogether were rated for an occupancy level of 420 people which was just less than the occupancy on the night of the fire. However, model fire codes required that the main entrances are able to accommodate half the number of the occupancies. On the night of the incident, there were code violations that were discovered that led to the significance of the fire. First, the foam used around the stage to deaden the sound was not treated by any fire retardant. Along with this, the fireworks that the band used 
were not permitted by the local fire department. This code for untreated foam had been in place for years before the fire, but had not been enforced. Secondly, the nightclub did not have adequate ways of controlling a fire at the early stage. The nightclub only had fire extinguishers that were not easily accessible to staff members. At the time, fire sprinkler systems were only required for new building codes and did not require retrofit for existing properties. After the incident, however, the code was changed and required buildings that were going to occupy more than 300 people to add fire sprinkler systems. Finally, the nightclub was unable to handle the amount of people in the building in case of an emergency. The building had exit doors that were not sufficient in getting people out quickly because the doors were narrow and not clearly marked. The station nightclub fire might not be the most recent fire catastrophe, but it will not be the last. From the devastation, one can be hopeful that the lessons learned will help prevent such a disaster in the near future. Many code violations were recognized from the night of the fire, and efforts to change codes have been made. Without proper fire prevention efforts and enforcement, communities will continue to have unnecessary, destructive, and life-consuming fires.